Administering California state government is the responsibility of the executive branch. Administering that branch and providing overall political leadership for the entire state falls on the governor. In Chapter 8, we survey the office of the governor, other executive officers, plus a sizable bureaucracy, all of whom compete for power and leadership in the Golden State. California's post-statehood governors have run the gamut in personality, governing styles, and political skills. Most have been forgotten by history, but others have provided uncommon leadership and made a mark on the state through policy entrepreneurship. Governors are considered the most powerful elected statewide official. official. Governors exercise a variety of duties and powers, including executive powers, budget leadership opportunities, legislative and judicial power, plus roles such as the state's commander-in-chief and chief of state. They share power and leadership authority with several other separately elected leaders, the most powerful of whom is the Attorney General. As you can see, lengthy service as go a governor is a recent phenomenon, and the governor's annual salary of $173,978 is among the nation's highest. There are a number of variables that affect the governor's leadership. Personality, political skill, political resources, factors such as the state's economic and political environment, and strategic considerations. In Governor Brown's case, these considerations can include high-speed rail and prison realignment efforts. We'll now take a closer look at the governor's power and duties, including executive powers, budget leadership, and legislative and judicial powers. The executive powers include making appointments to various administrative board and commission posts, as well as using executive orders. On the budget, the governor plays the lead role in the process and is a process that requires his constant attention. He is required to submit his budget to the legislature in the first 10 days of the calendar year. Once the governor submits his budget, he shares power with the legislature. But in the end, the governor has substantial power over the budget because he signs it and he can veto certain portions of it through a line item veto. The governor's legislative powers must consider all state residents as his constituency. Unlike legislators who represent only certain portions of the population, he must keep the larger interests of the state in mind. The governor's powers include setting the legislative agenda with the state of the state address, plus he can call special sessions of the legislature to deal with pressing matters. His or her judicial powers include appointment power for various levels of the court system, plus he or she can issue pardons, commute or reduce sentences, or reverse parole decisions. He or she also can decide which court cases the state will pursue at the appellate level. In addition, the governor is commander-in-chief of the California National Guard and also serves as chief of state. The governor competes for power with a number of executive officials who are separately elected and politically independent of the governor. The lieutenant governor generally is considered the least political threat, politically threatening of the other statewide elected officials. The attorney general is considered the second most powerful, powerful position in the executive branch, and many governors have previously served in this position. Secretary of State is essentially a clerk of records and elections and oversees a number of parts of the elections process. Superintendent of Public Instruction is officially nonpartisan, the only statewide official elected in a nonpartisan way. Other statewide elected officials include the Insurance Commissioner and the state's fiscal or money officers, the Controller, Treasurer, and Board of Equalization members please take a moment to review their responsibilities. In addition to these top posts, California's bureaucracy numbers over 300,000. They exercise functions common to all bureaucracies 
and in doing so, diffuse executive leadership and administration still further. Yet they deliver state services and personify state government to many Californians. California's executive branch both mirrors and attempts to govern a diverse state. In the process, it is limited by political and organizational fragmentation that resists efforts to reform it. This is your video lecture for this chapter. Please use the lecture and your study guide to prepare for this week's quiz. Good luck.